So in today's video, we have got to sort out the death in this enclosure. Don't worry, don't worry, I've click baited it a bit to be fair. It's not as bad as you see, the animal's perfectly fine. We've also got a load of other things to do, so I hope you'll stick around for that. We've got to go out to the forest, we've got a free shopping trip to go and do. We've got to get loads more branches and stuff for enclosure builds, similar to this one. We've actually still got to sort of work on that one. But yeah, we've got one of these to build up, we've got this one to build up, so we need to get some logs and we need to start getting that working. We also need a lot of moss as well. We've got to get some moss, we've got to go to the forest and do that. But the forest that we're going to is the breeding ground for two endangered animals here in the UK. So we're gonna have a little glance around, try and find one of them as well. We're gonna show you how to propagate the moss. You can see I've got my plant grow rack just here. So we're gonna show you guys how you can propagate moss, how you can take a little piece of moss just like this and then get a infinite amount of moss. Yeah, we've got loads to do today and uh, I hope you enjoy the video. I'm Richard, this channel is called Northern Exotics. Let's go. So let's start over here at the plant rack because it involves this. We've just sort of had this underneath these plant grow lights. If you want a cheap plant grow light that takes about six times longer to grow your plants than the Reptile Systems New Dawn LED, this is the one to go for. Yeah, it's not great, but it works. I'll leave a link in the description down below. This comes over here because, boof, what's died? Can you see it? Can you see it? So we had a big succulent there. I'll put a picture up now. And uh, it's basically died. Now, the only thing I can really come to conclusion about is, one, it's directly underneath the UV lighting. So I'm, I'm struggling to blame that solely because, boof, we've got a succulent all the way over there. That's doing fine. We've got one just there, bang underneath the actual light itself. They're doing perfectly fine. Not just doing perfectly fine, but they're growing really well too. We've also got this one just down here as well. That's doing perfectly fine. All I can come to a conclusion about is the substrate. It just wasn't nutritionally rich enough for that plant. We've done everything right. We've done everything we should, but we need to change it out. And I'm thinking we should go for a grass species. Now, how did I do this? How did I get this safe to put into there with Millie? Wow. I got this about a month ago when I first started to see that succulent dying off. I thought, that's, that's not repairable anymore, so I'll change it out. And I really like the grass one that we've got over in the back corner, so I figured we'll go for that again. This was actually on offer at the local Home Depot, so you instantly think, well, it's going to have pesticides and fertilizers on it. No. Well, you do need to instantly think of that. You don't want any insects to go into here, eat these bugs, and then, well, you don't want... You don't want any insects to go into the enclosure, then start eating this grass, get themselves full of pesticides, and then your animal to eat those bugs that are full of pesticides to then kill your animal. So how do you make it safe? Quite frankly, we just took it out of the soil that it was in, rinsed it underwater, got all the soil off, and then replanted it in our own bioactive substrate and let it grow. Lasted about a month, month and a half, maybe six weeks. And um, it absorbs all the nutrition that's inside the actual substrate. It gets rid of all the pesticides or fertilizers that may potentially be on that substrate. And it just grows and we just care for it for a month. And then it's safe to go into the enclosure. The amount of people that have a go at me for that. Oh, they shouldn't be on sand. That's not just sand. It's solid substance. It's expanding foam covered in sand. If you want to see how this whole enclosure was built, um, I'll leave a link just up there for you. But we're going to get that out now and have a look. We keep getting disturbed by animals. What's up, Popcorn? What's up, mate? What's up? What's up? Are you okay? Ooh, look at you, mate. Right, stop distracting me, mate. We're getting back to work. Oh. So we've got our little tub, and we've got the plant down here. Now I'm trying, I mean, it's just peeling up. So, I mean, there's something gone wrong here. Oh, a big chunk almost come up then. I'm hoping this has probably laid out some sort of nutrition within the actual substrate. I don't know. It might have done, it might not have done. But I just solely put it down to the substrate wasn't nutritionally enough rich for that particular specific plant. It could have even been that, or it just doesn't like direct sunlight. Oh, Millie's coming out to play. Hello, Millie. There's the roots for it. Bit more root just there. I want to try and get it all out, just in case it was the plant that was actually at fault. To replant, we're just going to tuck it underneath there. Lay it down, it already looks loads, loads better. I can't wait to show you this. Pack in the substrate around it, nice and firm and nice and secure. Get it really packed in there. And instantly, it looks loads better, but better than that, look at that. She's already out, she's coming for a look already. She loves the natural enrichment because again, it's something different, it's working her mind. She'll be able to walk all over that, walk in between it, she'll be able to just do loads of things. Look at her, 
Look at her down there. She's absolutely amazing. That's Millie, our female leopard gecko. Someone's getting jealous. The attention's not on you today, mate. Why are you getting so jealous? Why are you making so much noise? It's not you. It's Millie. Look at her. She's really intrigued on that. Look at that. Oh, that's amazing. She's soon to have a male added into this enclosure, just for a short while, so that she can sort of start breeding, really. Just sort of keeping an eye on her, let her get used to this new enrichment, then we'll add the male in. That's a future video, so make sure you do subscribe. She's gone back into a hot hide all the way down there. You can see her tail just there, so it's time to get sorted with the rest of the day. Let's go shopping in the forest. We need to prepare for when we do get the moss, and we can get it back here, we can get it set up as quick as possible. So we've got a tray with some of our tropical substrate mix inside there, We've also got a lid which will go on the top of it just to help keep the higher humidity within that actual whole container itself. The plant that we've just got from outside Millie's enclosure is in this tub. We're actually going to put all of that in there to be fair and take out some of the bigger leaf matter. That leaf matter is going to biodegrade down over time adding more nutritional substance, substance within the actual substrate itself. We're going to keep... Oh, hello mate. Check that out. We have got a superworm darkling beetle. That was one of the cleanup crews that was inside Millie's enclosure. Now, I'm not actually going to put him back in there, to be fair. So, I'm actually going to put him in with a different species. What animal should we put him in with? Look, there he is. Hello, mate. Give him a name because he's about to go in with our millipede enclosure. Oh, hello, buddy. Look, there she is. That's Millie McMillie face or Millie McMillipede face. There's the darkling beetle. You're going to go in, mate. You're going to go in. There you are. Welcome to your new home. Dude, you've got your first cohabitary invertebrate. Cool. Back to this. So we've got all the roots out, and we're just going to mix it all around. See what I mean? We've got some of the dried uh, leaves that were on that succulent. So I'm just going to break them up and just really mush that around, get it all in there nicely, and basically just keep filling it up with our tropical substrate mix. Our tropical substrate mix is absolutely perfect for both the plants, the animals, the cleanup crew, just absolutely everything. It's jam-packed full of the nutrition that we gen generally use. It's the one we use for all of our big bioactive enclosures. If you want to see how to make it, because it is very cheap, just like the majority of the stuff we do on this channel, hence why we're going for a free shopping trip in the forest, um, just click on the card, I'll leave it just up there. Once that's all done and the, the substrate is basically full, we're going to give it a good spray down and then put the lid on it. And why are we doing this right now? Quite simply so that this can actually get up to temperature. We don't want to be adding cold water onto a cold substrate and then adding the moss onto that. It's just going to stun the moss. So we may as well get it all sorted right now so it's ready for when we return and we can just get it set up straight away. Get the lid on, leave it in the sun and let's go get some moss. Hello girl, it's not often we see you out and about. How's it going? That's our Asamani female tarantula. The uh, LP, she's not gone, but Tick and Tock are hiding. You've got Tick just over the back there and I can't see Tock, he's a really good hider. So mental note, what do we actually need? We need a couple of more branches to go in there, the thinner sort of branches, so we've got to remember to pick that up. We've got to pick up some moss we need a couple of more branches, potentially for Mushu, just for while I'm sorting out his big enclosure. But then I'm sat there thinking, do 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 that one up there, that could do one or two branches in there. That is going to be getting a full build video, just like some of the build videos you do see on this channel. Again, if you want to see them, make sure you hit subscribe. But we also want to get some for popcorn. We need to get something more for popcorn, just simply because he's getting bored. We're noticing him, he's just sort of in his hide more than he's actually out of his hide. And that's not him. He's always out and about. He's always exploring. So he's getting a bit bored. So I'm going to add another couple of branches in there. Potentially ones to get him a little bit higher in one corner. I don't know. We'll see what we can find. We don't want to get any sort of rotten wood and stuff like that. And even when we do get it, it's not going to be able to go straight in anyway. Because we need to be able to save it, secure it, clean it. Get it really dried and secured, ready to go into these enclosures. But this guy, doody, doody. Popcorn is getting a guinea pig. No, it's not going to be a pet guinea pig. He's actually having a guinea pig as a meal in, a, in about a week or so. So when that video does drop, when I do drop that video, do us a favour, watch it from start to finish, hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment. Then YouTube will push that video out to loads more people. Then we can get loads more people to figure out how to save money and how to basically get rocks and stuff from the forest. I am rambling on far too much. Let's go to the forest. And... We picked up Jacob. What do you say to people, Jacob? Oh. 
<laughs> Let's show you the breeding grounds of the Natterjack toad and the sand lizards. What does that sign say, Jacob? Uh, I'm pretty sure it says toads crossing. Clever boy. That means there's Natterjack toads somewhere. Ooh. It's just a little walk down this path, then we'll come up to a pond and it's oh, the Natterjack toads. They're a nocturnal species, so we're probably not going to see them. And it's just starting to warm I up now. Literally two seagulls. <laughs> Well, when I was three, I stuck my finger right at a swan's face. And what did it do? It just bit my finger. Like this? Yeah. Let's go down the path and um, we'll go to the pond. We'll try and find some natterjack toads, but they're nocturnal, so we won't see them. What does nocturnal mean? Night. Yeah, they're awake at night time. But it is starting to warm up now. The sky's getting a bit warmer, so they might start coming out of hibernation. So we might hear them. Jacob, do you remember this tree? This one just here, because it's a dead tree, goes all the way up, but when you shake it... It just wobbles and doesn't fall. Don't run too far, because you don't want to go splash in the water, do you? Now it's advised that we don't take anything from here. You don't want to destroy a natural habitat for an endangered species, but we can come for a look around. You've only been walking two seconds, boof! Are you already puffed out? Yeah. Are you just looking at the birds? There is no birds. Now I think if we are going to spot any, it's going to be over the other side near all the lily pads. But you might find them in the edge of the water here if you're quiet. And there's me talking the loudest. Fee, fi, fo, fum. Look at all that moss. Oh. What you do, you just basically pinch up a little pinch of it. Don't take too much. You don't want to destroy it. You don't want to take all of it because then none will be growing there. It's obviously growing there for a reason. Just take a small piece, take it home and grow it. We'll show you how to do that when we get home. But now we've got this marshy suck, sort of looking land. So if we are going to spot any frogs and toads, Jacob, this is where we're going to do it. I can't see any frogs or toads here, maybe further down. So the Natterjack toads, they are an endangered species here in the UK. There's only four locations in the whole of the UK that are actually natively breeding. The Natterjack toads, they're not captive bred for wild reconservation. They just breed in those locations. This is one of those locations and we're lucky enough to have it only 40 minutes away from our house aren't we jacob yeah see now jacob places like this can you see all the weed in the water yeah that's where we're most likely to see the toads only through the night time or when it's just getting to darkness okay do you know where they live through the through the day yeah see the I mean, ground no. just there underneath all of the leaves yeah. they burrow themselves underground just there just underneath it so they've got all the moisture of the water and through the night time or dawn sunset time they'll come out and they'll hop around in the water they'll swim around that's when they eat all their food so let's come back when it's just about to turn night time well we can't do that jacob because just before night time is your bedtime but i did find some baby natterjack toads this time last year in a location very very close to here so i'll insert those clips about now the joy with the natterjack toads or the way you can spot a natterjack toads frog spawn it's toad spawn it's it lays up in a line whereas your normal frog spawns in a big ball of just loads of frog eggs these are all in a single line a string it goes all the way over there. Well, it's a good spot down there to try and find them because it's oh. dead marshlandy, isn't it? So they might be one. Have a look. You can tell if it's a natterjack toad because it'll have a yellow stripe down its back. So let's go to a different location now and show you guys how to collect moss. So you see this sort of stuff. It's just a log, a fallen log that's a moss. So you just pinch, like literally that much, flatten it out. So you've left loads there to keep growing and you've got loads to grow. You drop it inside a little plastic bag just to help keep the moisture in there and you drop it inside your carrier bag. Are you going to carry that from now on, Jacob? Um, sure. Okay, thank you. And then later when we get back to the studio, I'll show you how to actually plant it to grow it. And now we're in the woods of one of the new locations. Why can't popcorn have a pine cone? Well, you can't really grab pine cones because in the different temperatures and the different lights, pine cones open and close. So if you, it's open and it starts to close, but yet your snake's tail or your gecko's foot or your gecko's tail is inside the pine cone, when it closes, big problems can happen. So we don't have pine cones, do we? Yeah. See? How freaky does that look? Well, if you're here, God, I'm a little bit dizzy actually. When you're collecting logs, try not to actually pay attention so you can fall over all the stumps and it'll be funny because Jacob just laughed at me. You want to find the fallen ones, the ones that have already fallen. 
you don't want the green ones off the trees just because you don't want to break down trees really the ones that have fallen you've got to make sure they're not rotten so grab them give them a bit of a twist all that sort of stuff stuff like this sort of stuff absolutely perfect you want to try and go for more hardwoods rather than softwoods because hardwoods will just last longer inside the enclosure and you want to find it in places where you don't really get dogs again dog urine feces you don't want to go anywhere whether it's fertilizers or insecticides just be responsible with what you're picking don't leave the forest without any trees just for your animals it's not right is it jacob nah. see that log by your feet jacob oh yeah you want to grab it the one by your foot yeah do you want to put it in the bag yeah awesome Right, shall we play and show everybody how to play pinecone roulette? Yeah! Oh, you're going to love this game and not me if it's going to hurt me. How many pine cones have you got? Three! Three. Have you got daddy some pine cones? Oh my, I forgot. Oh, something's just fell on the floor. There must be like a squirrel up in the tree or something. Can we see a squirrel in the tree, everyone, guys? Right, have you got me some pine cones? Well, I've got, <clears throat> got what you want and I need to get a couple more. Oh, I like the way he's getting me the small ones. He knows how to play this game now, doesn't oh! he? Oh! What? Oh, so God, you awesome. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna put the camera. Go, Dad. We're gonna put the camera just there, okay, Jacob? Go. Yep. Daddy's gonna stand here. We're gonna throw the pine cones up in the air. They're gonna come down and if the donkers on the edge, whoever's won, won. Right? You ready? Yeah. Three, Three two, two, one. one. My one oh, got my... I threw all of them at the same time. You go now. Yay! Oh, they are scaring me. <laughs> nobody lost <laughs> we sort of found oh, he's found another stick we found this older part of the forest it was fairly new part but the wood is all oak trees and that the floor is covered in oak leaves do you know what you can do with that leaf litter you don't want the pine cones but the leaves you can take some of the leaves you can use them for loads of different things and i'll explain what you can actually use them for and how to sterilize them ready for your enclosures a little bit later it can be quite tedious to actually collect these leaves so i'll show you a little trick Jacob, we need some leaves. Okay. Do you want some leaves? Yeah. Right, here you go. Here's a little bag for you. You can fill them up in the bag. And you sort of just deal with it like that. And now you can go and uh, have a beer down a pub or something. And you get little pieces of wood like this. And you can try and break it all off. And that would just be a nice little display piece. Look at that. Get it all nice and cleaned off. And that would be amazing. We're taking this, Jacob, aren't we? Oh, is there bugs? Yeah. Oh, can we see any bugs? Can we see any bugs? Let me have a look. Can you see any bugs, Jacob? They're tiny, so we can't really see them. Wow. Jacob, look, see, there's one just down here. What is it? It's a little spider. So do you know what that means? This is the habitat of an animal, so we'll leave it here. Although it's a really nice piece of wood, we're actually going to leave it here so that spider can still live in his home, okay? Yeah. And that's what being a good person does. So instead of just clearing out one area and having your leaf litter like that, take just a few from various different areas and that way you still sustain the natural habitat of all the invertebrates and the bugs that live in the substrate i'm gonna hide i'm gonna hide behind a tree and like hide him so he can't find me here we go oh oh oh, oh. i can see him i can see you ah so you can see at the end of the forest right the way behind everything there's sand dunes and why they're important is they're the breeding ground for the sand lizards. Now the sand lizards, again, have only got three places in the whole of the UK where they actively breed. There's also conservations like Chester Zoo and other conservations that captive breed the sand lizards for wild repopulation. How cool is that? And the Sefton Coast is one of those places where they actually do reintroduce those lizards into the wild. Go over and have a quick look at the sand dunes, Jacob. Tell you what, it's really nice to see not only uh, they're naturally repopulating the species, but there's also conservation to helping to repopulate the species, which will speed up the natural repopulation. Um, you never know, one day there might not be a threatened species. Don't fall! Hey! Look at this, Jacob, look, tree moss. Whoa! Oh, looks cool, doesn't it? Let's go have a look at the sand dunes. Okay. Now we didn't find that many sticks, we've got a, a, a few, nothing big, nothing too little, just some bits that will come in handy eventually. It's not all about going out there just to find little bits that you can steal and take home, because legally it's actually classed as theft if you do take anything from the land. It's about having a good time with your kids. You're coming up the hill, Jacob, because guess what's at the top of this hill? Yeah, and anyways, I just... Sand dunes. See that big one just sticking up? There's a little path that goes up it. Do you reckon we can get to the top? Wait, the top of that sand dune? Yeah. Yeah. Come on then, let's go for a walk up the top and see what the view's like from the top. 
I actually know what the view is like. It's like a Martian land. It's something you wouldn't really expect to see in the UK. It's quite nice. So let's go up and have a look. Jacob, you've got five seconds to give me a high five or you smell. One, two, three, four. Hey! It's just my excuse of being lazy. And this is all the soft sand. It goes into hard sand. Does this grass look familiar to anybody? This grass is the same species of grass that's actually in Hugo's enclosure and some in Millie's enclosure as well. But this, again, is one of those lands where you can't take anything from the land because underneath all this grass is where the sand lizards poke their heads in. They make tiny little holes and that's where they decide whether or not to lay eggs in that little hole. So if you try and dig that out, who knows? There could be little sand lizard eggs in there and they're an endangered species. Oh, I'm getting old. Look at you, you're already at the top nearly. Oh, the view from up here, Jacob, is mind-blowingly amazing. Shall we have a look? Boom! Check that out just there. How amazing is that? You can see the sea out there. That's the um, Sefton coast, obviously. Over that way, right on the horizon, we've got Blackpool, and behind that, you've got the Lake District. Again, see those little ponds? They're from the Natterjack toads as well. So me and Jacob now are gonna have a bit of fun up on the sand dunes, spending dad and lad time, because it's the last day before Jacob goes back to school. So everyone wish him happy school day in the comments section down below. And uh, we're gonna enjoy ourselves. Join us back in the studio now. So welcome back. Now the light's dappled, the sun's shading down. Let's see what we've got in the bag. First of all, nice branchy stick thing. This is actually a little bit rotten, but this is rotten white wood. So I'm gonna crumble this up and stick it in with the millipede, because the millipede will eat it. If there is a firmer piece actually inside the stick itself, we can use that for something else. That's just one of the pieces we got. Guess who's come to join us? We have got this angled piece. Now this is great because it's going to adhere to the side walls and just provide loads of different stabilities. We can adhere it that way, we can have it as an angle. There's just loads of angles and loads of things we can do with a piece just like this. What else have we got in the bag? That's our bag of leaf litter. I'll show you how to prepare that a little bit later. We've got that bag there, that bag there, that bag there, that bag there, Whoa. and that bag there. Right, this is our moss, because we do need to use quite a bit of it rather soon. So how do we propagate it? Let's start with this piece, because this piece is quite big. So to start, we'll take the lid off it, we have got the moss just here. Now, each one of these bags has just got one piece of moss in, but I think this is the biggest piece. So, let's set, oh no, it's a few little pieces in here. So what you've got, you've got your dry end, this is the moss end, and you've got the root end, that's the darker end, the, the piece it was adhered to, so it could have been stuck to a piece of wood or something like that. Just lay it down nice and gentle, lay it down nice and gentle, just go through it all and do exactly the same thing. Lay it down nice and gentle, and then all you've got to do is grab it and push. Just really start to embed the substrate into the moss. Just nice and gentle. Don't be too firm, but be firm enough. Just like that. We've left loads of room for various growth areas around it. That's, that one just there is one that we're going to be using the soonest. So that's just in there to keep it alive. All you've got to do is give it a good spray down once every couple of days, and that is it. Leave the lid on to keep the humidity in and put it somewhere where there's a lot of light. Somewhere like your window ledge, absolutely perfect. The leaf litter, just boil it in a pan for 10 minutes, let it dry out afterwards, stick it in the enclosure. If you do any longer than 10 minutes, and a lot of the nutrition that's inside the leaves tends to come out in the water. You don't really want that. Let it dry out on a towel, then you can just drop it straight in your enclosures. It'll be sanitary enough for the animals that were provided. This lot is going to go in with my dart frogs when I do eventually get my dart frogs and in with my millipede right now. The joy with this is it's going to give time in my dart frog enclosure for the insects that are in there, the isopods and springtails to eat the leaf litter, poop out the fertilization into the substrate, fertilizing the substrate ready for the dart frogs to actually arrive. Hope you've enjoyed that video guys thanks for tuning in if you haven't already hit the thumbs up button because it really does help leave a comment down below just say hi i watch to the end i want to kind of see who actually does watch till the end peace out guys